was 19 years old, I was doing some work on Asian American prisoners. I was working in San Quentin as a GED tutor. And I remember writing to Yuri Kochiyama, who was one of our most prominent um, and consistent political leaders in the Asian American and kind of worldwide uh, racial solidarity movement. So I write to her on AOL and I ask her, can you tell me a little bit more about Asian American prisoners? And she invites me to Harlem to her apartment. And so it was the first time that I'd ever flown on a plane by myself from Oakland to Harlem. And I go to her small apartment. In this small apartment were all these posters of, you know, Black resistance, Puerto Rican movements, um, Asian American movements. Um, and then among that were all her teddy bears. And I remember sitting and talking with her and she said, have you ever heard of Eddie Zhen? And I said, no, tell me about him. And she said, well, I've been writing him letters and I want everyone to work to free him. So I, I can vividly remember her sitting there and her showing me the letters she was writing him. And also there were two other folks who were in the, in the um, small apartment and they were writing letters to Asian American prisoners. And I, I vividly remember her saying to me that we had to work together across communities of color to free all of our communities and to make sure to not forget you um, as, as an example of our folks who are inside. So I'm just super excited that some 20 plus years yeah. later, <laughs> we're on this side and still working together. Speaking of Yuri, definitely she's a mentor and also, uh, I, I, you know, I, I revere her uh, not because uh, China putting her on the pedestal, but really revere her for her spirit, uh, for the leadership that uh, she has shown and, sh and, be and being an ancestor, you know, to really create a leadership pipeline for uh, hundreds and thousands of people across uh, racial uh, ethnic groups, you know, in, the, in this uh, space. And so, um, you know, as a formerly incarcerated uh, individual that who spent 21 years of my life incarcerated, um, you know, I've, I found the, the legacy of Yuri was able to, uh, to, was able to really pave a way for me to uh, find my value as an individual, you know, and what I can contribute as a human being, right? And so, Hence, when I was able to really become uh, politicized in, when I was incarcerated, after learning how to read and write English and to be able to think critically, then I was able to really uh, solidify what I want to do with my life, right? which is to service the community, um, you know, until the day that I inhaled my last breath. Right? So that's how I was thinking when I, when I was inside. And so sure enough, because I was uh, in solitary confinement, uh, which is very like, uh, related to what's happening with the COVID-19, the shelter in place. Um, and that's when, I, when Yuri uh, actually came visiting me, right? He said, you went to visit Yuri in New York, and then she moved to uh, Oakland, California, and she uh, visited me to, because the introduction that I had with her and then to our mutual friends. Um, so I was really inspired by, you know, not only reading about her, her legacy, but then, you know, really seeing her in person to show the love that, that she was able to show to me as someone that, you know, she never met. And then, you know, I was incarcerated. Um, so that kind of solidified what I wanted to do. And she helped start the Asian Prisoner Support Committee as one of the founding members, you know. So, so I, after I, I was released, you know, I was just immersed myself into, uh, you know, supporting the Asian Prisoner Support Committee. And, and at the same time, I work in a community youth center in San Francisco doing violence, violence prevention and 